Trails of Cold and Steel Trails of Cold and Steel is a JRPG based on a pretty old franchise named Legend of Heroes and actually is the newest series of them, just after Trails in the Sky series. It's the first in a possible trilogy and by the time of this review only the second storm is launched, so let's talk about the most important item on the RPG, the story. There are no spoilers at all, as always, so stay tuned and let's begin. The story of Trails and Cold Steel definitely is the strongest part of the game. Incredible dance and having pretty good plot twists is a delight to watch and roleplay. Lots of likable characters fulfill the kingdom of Erebonia, and from all of them present in this game, I can think only one I dislike, Angelica. Oh man, I hated her. The protagonist is pretty good, even better than the little girl from the trays on the sky, and he has a strong personality that even grows through the plot. And yes, my dear husband was out there. <laughs> It has some beautiful waifus in Tars Academy, but forget about Laura, because she's already mine. <laughs> Probably the weakest point in the story is your slowness. I know that it's to deep your approach to the characters, but man, it is slow. Lots and lots of time to explain simple things and pushing the player to the boring persona scene like mechanics style, like that period of tests and score. Overall, the plot is consistent and enjoyable. The turn-based battle show the hit is pretty well done. Join a finish scene with simplicity at its best. Make you planning, especially at the boss battles, and it's fun. Having good valuable skills and never gets old and boring. It's one of its biggest triumphs. There are some minigames scattered to the game, trying to broke the ice and the most of the long-running story sequences, but they are too simplistic to have fun. The only one that is actually good is the TCG Blade game that you found at your school trip sessions. Near to the end, the game will present you a mecha fight style, which is superb. It's ton of paper size was based and it's pure awesomeness. I look forward to the second one for more Gunna battles like that. Yeah. People who watch this video probably already know about the thing Falcon never fails, music. And as always, it's absolutely gorgeous. I found one of two or three boring talk party tracks, and that's all. Other areas like battle music and such are flawless and full of wind to our ears. The English dub is almost perfect, at least for my taste. And you found some well known voice actors, but for those more purists, change it to Japanese audio still is an option. I never had many people I could really call friends when I was young. The nobles looked down on me, of course, but the common people treated me like I was different from them, too. Finally, we are here at Graphics Analyzers. Well, it's not the strongest point in any Falcon game whatsoever, but here it's decent. Based on a game that its foundation is on PS Vita, we shouldn't have great expectations though. There are lots of big empty areas to walk and textures are pretty bland even on the sea, excepting on major characters and on monsters. The special effects on art and strikes are good too, but for some reason, it reminds me JRPGs from PlayStation 1 era in a good way though. Fun Factor 
Even on its weakness trees on the cold steel works well and it's lots of fun. Even on the simplistic battles mechanics that the first quarter of the game enjoys, near to the end the game really catches on fire and changes from a pretty good RPG to an outstanding one and you will want to know what happened to your beloved characters. So, if you invest some patience at the beginning, it's an excellent JRPG totally worth of your time and worth it to be in your digital or physical game collection. Enjoy! Hey, guys? Hmm? This is a really beautiful place. Yeah, ain't it? <laughs> 